This case came to the court when an individual by the name of Paul Ferber was arrested and convicted of uh, child pornography. He sold two videotapes depicting two boys under the age of 16 masturbating. Ferber went to trial originally and he was found guilty. He appealed. His attorneys were successful in their appeal in that the New York State Supreme Court ruled that Ferber's argument was correct in that the depictions were artistic and should be protected by the First Amendment. The case is then appealed to the U.S. Supreme Court and now they are reviewing it. The issue dealt with the amendments to the Constitution, that is specifically the First Amendment. The next set of appeals goes to the federal level. Ultimately, it ends up in the U.S. Supreme Court and as I indicated, they make their decision and it is published in July of 1982. The court said a number of very important statements regarding its findings. First, it said that a child being depicted in any pornographic pose, a movie, a photograph, it didn't matter, was the same as child abuse. Specifically, they said that it was harmful to them physiologically, to their emotional development, and to their mental well-being. Second, because of the nature of pornography is one that memorializes the act. By that, when you take a movie, when you take a photograph, it has the potential to live a very long time. And the court found that to be a potentially horrific event to the child because as the child grows up, that photograph may never go away. Blackmail, as you can imagine, other forms of deviant behaviors can occur to the child as a result of that. Third, the court attacked the network, the distribution process of child pornography by saying that any industry or business that procures children and involves them in sexual exploitation for profit must be shut down and they wanted to attack the network itself which is the idea of going after the promoters. And then fourth, the court refers back to a 1973 decision it made in the Miller versus California case where they define obscenity. Basically what the court says is that if the depictions of the child have no artistic value, have no educational value, have no scientific value, in other words, the act itself is patently offensive, then it will not be protected by First Amendment freedom of expression. And last, the court attacked the problem of the statute in terms of the argument that it was too broad, and they simply denied that, saying that a state has the right, in fact, is compelled to protect its youngest citizens and those who need protected the most and therefore they ruled against Faber and now the case at hand has led to a number of other pieces of legislation which we'll discuss. In the following segments I'd like to review with you a 1996 legislative act and the most recent one the Adam Walsh Act which is 2006.